Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Virgo for March 2016. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see my astrology blog and all of my other blogs I write on various topics. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community and get all kinds of perks that go along with that. So what is happening in March? There's so many things to talk about in March for Virgo and in general. We have the eclipses. We've got the solar eclipse at 18 degrees of Pisces on March 8th. We have the lunar eclipse at 3 degrees of Libra on March 23rd. This is the completion of the Aries-Libra cycle of eclipses that have been going on since 2013. And we are moving, continuing to move through the Pisces-Virgo eclipses that have been going since 2015 and will go into 2017. So it's a specifically potent time for people with Pisces placements and people with Virgo placements because when you have an eclipse cycle involving your sign, there's tremendous change. And a lot of the changes are centered around your relationship with yourself and your relationship with other people. So you will have noticed uh, last year and in the coming years, there's a dramatic shift in how you are in relationships. Some major relationships may have begun or may be about to begin. Some major relationships may have come to an end or chapters within major relationships may have ended even if you've continued on in the same relationships. How you're seeing yourself is changing so rapidly and whenever you see yourself differently, you show up differently in relationships. As soon as you set an additional boundary in life with people, they will either rise to the occasion or they will leave your life. So you're, you're going through this process of assessing where you have taken on more things that are not yours to bear, where you have been showing up or presenting yourself in a way that doesn't feel authentic for you. And those things are just rapidly just being put away. So this eclipse cycle, you may see the endings of uh, ending of a relationship or more than one key relationship or a major chapter closes. You may also see a major opening in that same relationship or a new relationship. This is very much a relationship based series for Virgo. Some of you middle to later degree Virgos will also have an added component of the sixth house. So just a reminder, we've got the early degree placements are from the beginning of the sign. So sometimes it's the 23rd of August, sometimes it's the 24th, and then you count up 10 degrees or 10 days from that day, the year that you were born, that it went into Virgo. See, so it, it sometimes it's staggered by a date each year, but from around the 23rd to around September 2nd. So essentially all August born Virgos with the first day or so or a couple of days in September are early degree placements. And then from around the 3rd through the 12th are the middle degree placements. And then from around the 13th through the 22nd or 14th through 23rd, those are the late degree placements. So if you're watching for your rising sign, if your rising sign is between zero and nine degrees, then that's early, 10 to 19 degrees is middle and 20 to 29 degrees is late. Okay, so you can position yourself in the early, middle or late so that as we drill down to some more specific effects, you can see where, you're, where you are with that. So some middle and all of the late degree placements are going to have this solar eclipse energy, the opening, the new energies, the new portals being open in the sixth house. This has to do with your health. This has to do with everything around your health, diagnostics, medical care, exams, <coughs> excuse me, anything that you're trying to get sorted out, anything that you're trying to improve, any problem that comes up that you're trying to resolve. It includes your diet, it includes supplements, it includes medications. It also includes alternative medicine or alternative procedures or alternative practices like yoga or um, meditation. It's basically your daily health routine and what you do and it's also including an exercise. So something new opening up there for you. Some of you will have something new around pets or animals. Virgo is the sign that rules most animals and most household pets. So as a Virgo, you may already be very busy with things involving animals, either yourself or through rescues or other means. But this eclipse cycle may bring in more new energy around animals. You may find yourself with a new pet or enter a new chapter with your current pet or your current animal situation. The sixth house also rules your daily experiences. So in that way, office, the office place 
is there. So your, your office, wherever you go every day, if you're self-employed in your home, then that's your sixth house. That's your everyday thing. So some dramatic new opening or new schedule or new freedom in your schedule or something shifting with your day-to-day -day experience, that will likely be an improvement. The energy, since it's a solar eclipse, is leaning more towards this being a happy type of an opening. So some middle and all late degree placements have this energy in the sixth house. The rest of you early degree placements and the rest of the middle degree placements have this opening in the house of relationships. So it's interesting that there's energy opening in the house of relationships, but there's also energy closing in the house of relationships for, or the sign of relationships for everyone. So the lunar eclipse, which closes, brings things to fruition, ends things, is happening in the sign of Libra. So we were talking about two different things here, the house and the sign. So it's very busy in this arena of your life is the point. So with the lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Libra, that makes it possible for all Virgos and really all signs to have endings of relationships or endings of chapters within relationships that are very critical and notable. When someone has a lunar eclipse in their first house, which most of you will experience this in the first house, some early degree placements will experience this in the second house. The first house lends itself to possibly a personal drama or a personal crisis. Sometimes it could be related to health or just overworking yourself, something like that. Um, or just a crisis about your identity and what you're presenting to the world and where, what you're doing, you know, who you are, who you're being, if it feels authentic or not, and what you need to do to shift that. For the early degree placements, that lunar eclipse energy can also manifest in finances. So the ending of an income stream, the ending of a way that you made money before, Sometimes this actually decreases income, but sometimes this opens up for new um, collaborative events in this case, because the opening for the solar eclipse has to do with partnerships. So it's possible that your individual income or your individual financial picture might shift to favor a, a relationship um, focus. So one example uh, how this could manifest is let's say you're getting married and when you get married that is actually a financial agreement. There are, I mean, when you get legally married, that's actually a financial agreement. You know, people don't need to get legally married to, to be spiritually married or to love each other or to be together. So when you enter that contract of marriage, it's actually mostly financial. And when you end out your individual, your individuality with your finances, as you do in a legal marriage, that is an example of what this energy can look like because then you open it up in favor of your, your um, couple income, your, your group, or not group, your family. You know what I'm saying? So it's like something about your individual energy is closing in favor of the focus on the relationship. And this could be with a romantic partner, this could be with a, a business partner, this could be even in some ways with a roommate or a key, a key relationship in your life. Maybe you've decided to not have um, overhead and you're moving in with a friend and so you're going to have some shared finances there, you know? So just the general theme here is something in the house of me and or me and my money is ending and something in the house of we and our relationship is opening. So that's the general gist of the eclipses. Eclipse times can be very stressful in some ways and they can be very exciting in other ways because you often can get just amazing good news with this solar eclipse bringing in new things. And sometimes there's really dramatic, sad endings that are not welcome. So it's a very intense time and the news can start to come in as soon as early January, I mean late January, because up to six weeks before the actual eclipse, news and events and circumstances can start to make themselves manifest. So it's a very, very busy time. Okay, so what else is going on? Um, the middle degree placements, so specifically here, people with 13 degrees through around 23 degrees or birthdays around September 5th through around September 16th, the, you in this group are undergoing a massive amount of additional change besides the eclipse cycle being in your sign you have Jupiter crossing over your ascendant and retrograding back over and then going back over. When Jupiter crosses over the ascendant, this is a big deal in your life. This is the start of a new 12 year cycle. And really all year, 
all all sun virgos are going to be experiencing this as well and all rising sign virgos over the whole year that jupiter is in virgo this runs through about september 2016 so from like september of 2015 through september 2016 everyone with a virgo sun or a virgo moon or a virgo rising is going to start some kind of new 12-year cycle you know that's just that's just what's going on right now but the ones who are most feeling it at this point are the ones between 13 degrees and 23 degrees and between September 5th and September 16th because Jupiter is in retrograde and it crossed over that point for you, whether it was your sun or rising sign or moon, and now it's retrograding back over and then it's going to cross over again. So when this happens, it opens up a new cycle of expansion, but sometimes you have to release a tremendous amount of things that are not up with the vision. Like if there's a vision of your new life and there's a bunch of things that are not in congruence with those new visions, then those things have to be let go. And so it's like an exciting time, but it can be a very stressful time because saying goodbye to things can be very stressful. So you middle degree placements have this major crossroads um, energy in your charts that is very powerful. And to add to that, a lot of you in the middle degree grouping have experienced, are experiencing now, or are about to experience Saturn crossing over your fourth house cusp. So we're talking about the first house cusp and the fourth house cusp. There are 12 signs, there are 12 houses. The line before you get into the house is called the cusp. And there are four houses that are linked by mathematical relationship that are of critical importance. And that's the first, fourth, seventh, and 10th. I call them the big four. So if you have something going on at one of those, it's beaming angles up to the other houses. So if you have Jupiter hanging out at your, around your first house cusp, it's kicking a 180 degree angle to your seventh house cusp, which is a critical angle. It's kicking a 90 degree angle up to your 10th house cusp, and it's kicking a 90 degree angle down to your fourth house cusp. So these big four are activated all at once. So that's self, relationship, home, family, upbringing, um, houses, sometimes has to do with a parent, usually mother, but it could be either parent and also the psychological issues that could be at the source of problems that come up are in that fourth house. And then the 10th house has to do with your career, your work, and your life purpose. So having Saturn at the fourth house cusp has a similar energy where Saturn is affecting the fourth house cusp, but it's kicking a line up to the 10th house and it's kicking 90 degree angles to the first and seventh. So middle degree placements have not one, but two outer planets that are activating this big four plus the eclipses. So if you're going through some major stuff, this is part of the explanation or maybe all of the explanation why. You know, this is um, time for you to make radical change. And it's going to come whether you're letting it or not. So the more you can release and relax and let go, the easier time you're going to have. So there's something else that everyone is going to be experiencing, which has to do with Mars retrograde. Mars goes retrograde around every two years. So we don't hear about this as often as Mercury, which happens all the time, right? Um, and Venus, which happens a little less often, but uh, more often than when than Mars going into retrograde. So Mars rules ambitions. It rules our creative faculties, our sexual forces. It rules um, ambitions, um, initiative, taking initiative, taking action, anything that's assertive or even up to aggressive in our lives, you know? It's our get up and go, basically. So when you have Mars going backwards, there could be this getting up and go, getting up and went. <laughs> you know, you very many people will find a slowdown. Now, it's interesting when Mars is in retrograde because even though it's going backwards and that slows things down and cools things off a little bit, it's also closer to us in proximity. So energetically, the energy of Mars is stronger. So that can be coupled with more people wanting to do more things and feeling like aggressive towards action but the energy going backwards, so the key energy of frustration coming up because they want to move forward, they're feeling like they really need to move forward, but they can't. So that's going to be dominating the scene. Really, it starts from the end of February through the end of October, but it will be strongest towards the end of March and then into the middle of July. 
and it is at, at its absolute strength from April 17th through June 29th when the actual transit is retrograde. The other periods of time beforehand are the shadow periods, but they still are potent. So with all of that being said, if you have something that you need to do, something you need to initiate, something you need to push forward into the world, February in the beginning half of March is going to be your best bet for that. Now at the same time as I'm saying that, these stars are so tricky right now, eclipses in general, eclipse time is not the best time to make forceful decisions forward because unless you're responding to something, there's a difference between initiating something and responding to something that's come to you. Totally different energy. Eclipse time is generally a time to respond to things that have come to you, but not to take action on your own. So that's true about eclipse time, but because if we put this period of time on a calendar for the whole year, there's only three windows where there's even any kind of positive energy for moving forward. And that is February into the first half of March, and then like the second half of July into the first couple of weeks of August, and or like weekish of August, and then like the end of October through the beginning of December. Everything else is cloaked in a Mercury or Mars retrograde or both. So it's like, you have to pick your battles. You know, if there's something that you need to push through, you've got a window to do it. Are there going to be implications with it? Possibly. You know, is it possible that you try to push something forward and then the universe comes with an eclipse piece of news that just takes you completely off track with what you're trying to do? Yeah, that could happen. You know, but you're not going to have a better chance to push something forward on your own, with your own will, on your own volition until the middle of the summer or winter for my people down under. So, you know, you might want to take advantage of that. If you birth something during Mars retrograde, it can often just fizzle out. You know, when the planet that rules assertive energy and forward motion is backwards, then anything that you're trying to push forward, that birth date of that launch or whatever it is, doesn't have the strength of the go-getting planets. So it's something to seriously take into consideration. There's a lot of things to look at. You can understand Mars Retrograde a little better by checking out my Mars Retrograde video. Um, this will be up by the first week of February. So if it's not there when you look, then check back and there will be a corresponding blog if you're a person that needs to see it in a written form. So I hope that this is helpful. I hope that you have a wonderful month. If you need some assistance um, from me personally, you can check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com and click on coaching to see about working with me. I also have a 28 day virtual coaching program that is on a sliding scale, so it's accessible to everyone. And it assists you in clearing up weak links in your energy field that the transits tend to activate. So if you have weak links and there's challenging transits, then you tend to get shown where your weak links are. But if you strengthen your weak links, then there's less for the stars to show you. So that's why I put that together to assist in experiencing transits more gracefully and maximizing their potentials. And while you're there, definitely check out my blog and sign up for my free email newsletter and get the perks that go along with that. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.